Uh, All right, welcome back to the IOY podcast today. I got a new guest on today. Go ahead and introduce yourself, man. Come on, man. You already know it's uh, it's the illest bull from Nebraska, man. It's your boy, Paint Boy KD. Hell I'm yeah, out man. bounce rocking and shaking, you know, representing my Baltimore city. My Ravens is in the building. We we in the building, man. <laughs> For sure, man. Let the people know uh, what you do if they don't know. Uh, well, I'm a rapper. You know what I'm saying? So I rap I'm more like an artist, man. You know, I, I paint pictures with these words, man, you know, and, uh, Shit, I'll just be booling, man. I'll be chilling. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, how did you start rapping? Uh when I was young, man, when I was about when I was about, I don't know, about eleven or twelve, you know, my older relatives was you know, they was rappers. You know, this was back when we was rapping on motherfucking uh computer mics and you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like when Fruity Loose was first just starting to pop off. We was using computer headsets, you know, as microphones of taping them to the walls and stuff. So, you know, I was just growing up just watching them rap, man. And, you know, I had already had big music influences, man. Like, to this day, I'll say one of the biggest influences in my music was Michael Jackson, man. I just loved Mike. Oh, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So I was just like... uh I used to ask my relatives, I was like, yo, can I rap with y'all? And, they, and I was weak, man. I started off terrible. You gotta start like, somewhere. Yo, you know, and they was like, yo, if you ever write, you know, you ever write something that's, you know, worth listening to, it'll let you jump on. So I just, every day I went over there, I was just writing and writing and writing. Eventually, man, I wrote something good enough. They let me jump on that little mixtape at the time. And from then on, man, I just kept writing, just kept going. Yeah, yeah. So it was your name originally Paint Boy KD back then? Uh no, my first rap name I ever came out with, I was uh I was young Dupree. Hey bro, you remember I was young Dupree of the game. Uh what's the name? So yeah, uh KD stands for it's my first it's it's the initials of my first name and my middle name. You know what I'm saying? So Back then, I used to just go by my middle name. I ain't like my first name, you know what I'm saying? So I just was going by Dupree or Young Dupree. And uh, so I was YD back then. And then I was just like, oh, I'm going to switch it. Once I got older and grown, I was just like, man, I'm KD. Mind you, yeah. mind you, I want everybody to know. Now, I was KD well before Kevin Durant ever came out. I just wanted to throw that out there. I've been, I've been going by KD. I got it tattooed on me. I've been doing this for so long. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. No, that's cool as fuck, man. You know, where did, uh, you know, when was kind of like your uh, click moment, you know, when you got in, you know, when you're like, fuck it, this is what I want to do with my life. Well, my little brother and my mom and my pops, you know, before my pops passed away, they always told me, you know, I was, I was cold because even at like a young age, I could put words together and explain situations that, you know, at the time of my age, I shouldn't have been able to, you know, I was rapping about shit that I shouldn't have been able to rap about, you know what I'm saying? Or at least describing it in in more ways than it was just like, dang, you know, you're able to paint a perfect picture. Like, even when I was young, I was always able to, you know what I'm saying? I could explain something without you have, like, without you being there, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? But uh, I think the first moment that uh, I think the first moment that ever made me be like, OK, I could do this for real was uh, when I moved. I moved from Omaha. I moved to Lake. And the first time I put out my first song that I put out, it was called Church. It was a diss song. Yeah. So, you know, to a lane here in the city. And when I put it out just the the traction that I got from it like it was I remember I used to get motherfucking hype over like hundreds of views like I remember this thing got like 40,000 views Mm -hmm. in like a day and I was like wait a minute that's crazy you know what I'm saying and ever since then I just never I I never stopped yeah I just kept going yeah and I could you know definitely see the progress from you know from back then to where you are now and I mean, you know, with that church song, you know, that was, I think maybe one of the second or third songs I heard by you. And I was, I didn't even really know who you were dissing. You know, you just said it was just someone from the town. (laughs) Yeah. So it was just, I didn't really have nothing against the bull at the time. You know what I'm saying? It's just, 
because when I first came, when I first moved over from uh, Omaha to Lincoln, you know what I'm saying? Uh, the uh, My manager approached me with the idea at first, you know what I'm saying? And at first, and I ain't going to pull no punches. I'm going to tell you exactly what went down, how it went down. My manager was like, yo, you need something that's going to give you a name. And unfortunately, controversy sells faster than positivity. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, which I wasn't a positive person anyway. You know what I'm saying? So he just knew. I always had this biggie comparison when I was coming up like, yo, you remind me of big, not just because you big, you know what I'm saying? But because of the way, yo, the grittiness of your delivery and all that. So he he brought up, you know, I, I don't care to mention the bull name, but he brought his name up to me. He was like, yo, I want you to go and watch like three of his videos, call me back and tell me exactly what you think. So I'm like, I right, bet, you know, so I went, I watched uh, a couple of his videos. I called him back and I was like, uh, the bull ain't that nice. Like, I'm going to keep it real with you. I don't think he, I don't think he nobody important at least, you know what I'm saying? And my, my people was like, well, well, he think he the king of the town. And like he, he, he the self-proclaimed king of Lincoln. And I was like, oh, well, like, you know what I'm saying? I kind of looked at it like, like, like bull from Wakanda. Like, yo, is this y'all king? You know what I'm saying? I'm like, this is y'all king? Yeah. So I'm like, all right, you know what I'm saying? So I, I, I dropped Church was the first diss song. You know what I'm saying? Mind you, I want people to know when I wrote Church, Church was already halfway wrote before I converted it into a diss song. You know what I'm oh, saying? Okay. Yeah. That's why. That's why the beginning of the song, you don't hear me sending shots at nobody. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I had church wrote all the way up into the dear Lord was going on. Why you call my cousins mm -hmm. home? Bless me when I'm doing right part. I had it all the way wrote up into that. So after I finished that part out and after I decided, OK, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to diss him. Then I was like, all right, well, I'm going to use church because church was already had that that deep dark you know that 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 beat it had the rocky intro yeah. on it so i was like yo this is the perfect song to like just convert it from this point but instead of rewriting the song i'm gonna leave the beginning because i'm saying some real shit in the beginning you know what i'm saying so i'm like so i'm at this part and i'm just sitting i'm sitting in my mama house bro and i'm thinking okay road through l town asking where this nigga screw at and literally just started going off from that point you know what I'm saying? And then I wrote the rest of the song, like, B. And then the end, the acapella, the acapella was just something that I always, like, I just developed. It's because when I first started rapping, like, I didn't know the concept of, like, you know what I'm saying, of, like, finding beats and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, when I started, when we started rapping, we was at daycare and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, this back at daycare time, you yeah. know, where all we had was, was we was beatboxing or we was just rapping acapella. Pella, like we thought we was like battle rappers you know what I'm like like I remember days sitting at in, at school you know being at the lunch table and shit like we was just rapping acapella you know it's just yeah. whoever go go and that's kind of how that came about yeah and I really like that uh you know about your songs you know because you definitely did that on uh all bars as well you know and that's when you went fucking hard you know that that's the first yeah. song I ever heard by you too was yeah, that one? The the acapella, the, the story behind the acapella was just like, you know, the reason why I love doing the acapellas is because I think, especially with music today, I think sometimes the beat carries the song. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like, Definitely. I think I think a person becomes more invested in the beat and a vibe than they do the actual song. So when I started doing my acapellas, I did it in a way to be like, no. We got bars, you know what I'm saying? We not relying on the beat. We not relying on, you know, the vibe. We relying on these words. These words just was going to make you be like, oh, this dude, cold. So when I started doing the acapella, I almost, like, it was, to me, that was, like, my secret weapon. Like, that's my sauce. My sauce is the acapella at the end. And it was, I was using it more as, like, a metaphor, too. Like, yo, the beat can't contain me. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I rap two minutes after the beat. You know what I'm saying? Like, it don't matter to me. Like, like I even even if you remember watching 8 Mile, remember at the yeah. end when Eminem, when they fuck the beat, I go a cappella. Like, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? Because it forces you, because the vocal, 
because the vocals are so dry and there's nothing behind them, no ad libs, no nothing, nothing to get you hyped. So it's almost like like bringing attention to what I'm saying. When yeah. that beat cut and all you can hear is my voice, I'm forcing you to listen to what I'm saying. And that's why when I do do the acapella, I got to go crazy. Like if the song was nuts, the acapella got to be 10 times more nuts. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because now I don't have no variables to carry me. This Nothing. is just me now. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So I got to go extra nuts. No, and absolutely. And that's what I love, you know, about your style, you know, is that you can you can do that shit. You know, not a lot of people can say they can do that, that acapella like that, you know, because it, it differentiates you from anybody else. You know what I'm saying? Right. Cause I, I ain't never really seen that shit, you know, nowadays, you know, people doing that acapella after the beat. That's how you know that you can fucking rap and that you have it's fucking people is because people is relying on all the these beat. other variables to carry it. And yeah. I don't know. I carry the beat. The beat don't carry me. Man. No, for sure. Was a, I guess, you know, kind of like a follow up, you know, was all bars like because I couldn't really find too much on your gallons one, you know, that first. Right. What, what is the story behind that? Because I didn't know if like all bars was on that and some other songs. No. OK, so the all right. So the story behind the gallon is why I chose to name my uh my CDs five gallons. So it started. We started with five gallons. Right. When five gallons came out. We was a group. So Payboy ENT is a group, you know, more than just a label. And it was like it was like seven of us. So it was me, Payboy Youngster, Payboy Amp, Payboy AR. Payboy uh, Dirty D, you know, it was Payboy Trill, Payboy, uh, man, it was all like, we was, it was just all of the family, mind you, we all, most of Payboy is related through my manager's people, because like, my manager is AJ and Crystal, oh, Payboy okay. Youngster is Crystal's son, Payboy Zay is Crystal's brother, or so Payboy Zay, Yella, and, uh, and, um, AR is, is is Crystal's brothers. You know what I'm saying? So they all family. Oh. Me and Imp was the only people a part of Payboy that wasn't directly related to the, you know, to the to the managers and the other artists. So we um so we was we we dropped a collaborative mixtape when we started as a group. And then through, you know, as certain artists rise and certain artists didn't, you know, I just felt like you know, I'm no, not throwing dirt on my squad because I still love everybody. You know what I'm saying? But I just felt like ego kind of play a part in it. You know what I'm saying? To where eventually either people just stopped doing music or kind of just went the other way. Plus, we was just all in a situation where when we first started rapping, a large majority of us is still in the streets. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So, you know, people going to jail, shit like that. So that's kind of what kind of tore the group down. So when we started with five, now the metaphor behind the gallons was, is we're all, um, we're all contract painters. So that's how we actually started to have the money to get the studio time and to do like the studio, you know what yeah. I'm saying? To do the music was the fact that my manager, AJ, he is a, he a master painter, you know what I'm saying? So he took all of us off the street and taught us the trade. He taught us how to paint. You know what I'm saying? How to professionally paint. Mm -hmm. So we was going out instead of selling dope or selling drugs or gang banging in the streets or whatnot. He would get us all and collect us all in the uh, in the morning <laughs> and take us all out to like whatever project he was work working on. You know, he'd got a thirty six thousand dollar job. He'd take us to the job, Damn. buy us whites, and teach us how to paint. You know what I'm saying? So. Whenever you go in a paint a commercial real or like you know commercial buildings or you know commercial real estate things like that, you know typically you're never you're never going to use anything less than a five gallon bucket. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? You know, like all the projects start with a five gallon bucket because that's what you dip the paint machine in. Mm -hmm. So when we put out five gallons, we kind of put that out as a testament of we're starting a project, we're starting a paint job or oh, a camp. You know what okay, I'm saying? Yeah, that's yeah. the whole. That's the whole metaphor behind us being paint boys. You know what I'm saying? Oh. And, and as I dropped more projects, you know, it was five gallons, four gallons, three gallons. I'm at two gallons. I, or I dropped two gallons and then one gallon is going to be the last. That's the last, you know, a di or, uh, that's the last, you know, gallon to the to the job. So once you get down to one gallon, 
basically the paint job is almost done. Once you mm. run out of gallons, we finish painting. You know what I'm saying? We finish painting the building. Oh, you know, okay. with less gallons. So that's the metaphor behind the gallons. You know what I'm saying? And it was just it's just crazy how like we came up with the concept. So five gallons was the collaborative. You still there? Yeah, yeah. I think it oh, just yeah. cut out. There it goes. There it goes. Okay. So yeah, are you so, saying it was the collaborative? So um, you still there? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. So uh, basically mm -hmm. uh, the way that it went down, you know what I'm saying? It's just we all decided that we was all gonna take one of the gallons, and four four gallons was my solo. But then, you know, as shit started progressing. And, like, people started getting in trouble and shit. I just took over the whole thing. So I did four gallons. Then I did three. Then I did two. Now I'm going to just finish it off and do one. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But, you know, everybody's still working. It's all still love. Everybody's still together. So, I mean, we still we still out here. But, you know what I'm saying? Just certain situations just caused us, caused me to have to, you know, handle it myself. Right. No, I see. No, that, that's what I was wondering. I was like, where the fuck can I find gallons one? You know what I mean? But no, that's really oh, cool. Yeah. No, 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 gallons one ain't, ain't finished yet. I'm making for a gallon. I'm making sure one gallon, one gallon since this, it's the end of the project, since it's the end of the paint job. I just got to make sure one gallon is just it's crazy. It got to yeah. it got to surpass all the other gallons. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, no, I, I see exactly what you're saying. So I guess, you know, to kind of start, you know, I guess instead of starting from gallons two and up, or going up, I'll start at gallons four. You know, I kind of just had a few songs I wanted to, you know, like have you break down and kind of explain, you know, on each little project, you know what I mean? For sure, for sure. Okay. Uh, so one of my favorite ones was uh, Problems. Okay. You know? So like that one, kind of explain that song. Okay, so Problems was... Uh... When I, I was, I'm heavily influenced by like, like Memphis rappers, you know what I'm saying? Like Money Bag Yo and things and Money Man and shit like that. So when I made problems, I made problems. Like when I, I just remember when I first heard the beat, the, I had yeah, yeah, yeah. some problems, I had some problems, baby. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm just, so when I'm breaking down, doing the problems, you know what I'm saying? I'm just kind of talking about like, like certain things that I just felt was key components to like, the problems that I was dealing with at the time, you know, like for instance, on the second verse, all my life I got shitted on. That's why I stay shitting on them. You know what I'm saying? Like, like it was just, I just when I wrote problems, I was just like, man, I just gotta do, like, I gotta bring, like, my, the problems that I was going through at the time to the forefront. Like, uh, what, uh, how did, how, bro, how did the, what's the name, the beginning of problems is, uh, I used to sell my father dope for him when my pops blacked out. Yep. He was fucking them fat bitches just to use the spots as a trap house. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was just, just real nigga shit. Like, this is, this is real thing. Like, like I'm, I'm sitting here with my little brother. My little brother tell you, like, these is real stories. Like, this shit is real shit, though. Like, back then, you know, when my pops. You know, my pops, he passed away. But, you know, at the time, you know, my pops, he was involved in some shit he should or shouldn't have been involved in. And, you know, when he, when he, my dad was a drinker. So when he would get drunk and he would pass out, you know, we, we got to continue. You know what I'm saying? We got to continue to make this money. We got to pay these bills. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So, you know, I, sometimes I just had to take the reins sometimes. And through doing that, you know, I kind of established, you know, a way to make money on my own and, I'm just talking about some real shit. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like the whole song. And then one of my favorite part of the uh, of problems is uh, it's like towards the end of the second verse where I was like, I turn up a lot, burn up a lot, chop it through flame, but I burn up your block. Like I just thought that it was hard. It was wicked because I say this whole thing and then like right in the middle of saying it, I reverse it. So I think the whole thing go, I turn up a lot, burn up a lot. Chopper shoot flame, bitch, I burn up your block. These niggas is pussy who won with the mob. Pull up and do hits of convertible tops. My niggas is hot. You niggas is hot. Throw up the wrong shit and that nigga get popped. Fuck with your boy and this bitch get mopped. Leave nothing but blood, but this bitch get mopped. This bitch get mopped, that nigga get dropped. Like, and I just like literally reversed the whole verse. You know what I'm saying? It was crazy. 
Yeah. Like, yeah. No, absolutely. That, that was one of my favorite songs off of that project, you know, and you really did kill that shit, you know, and like, you know, just like, like you said in the intro, that beat, you know, that with the yeah. girl singing and shit like that, it was just perfect for the whole song. Hell yeah. Like, I just, I thought that sample was nuts. Yeah, it definitely was. You know, another one I did like too was Bonvo, Bonvo's. Okay, so Bonvo's, Bonvo's is a, uh, that was kind of like me, me and my alter ego having a whole conversation. Yep. Like, <laughs> Bonvo's was kind of like, like you ever seen the movie Training Day? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so Bonvo's was so, so Bonvo's happened. Bonvo's is a one day thing. You know what I'm saying? So the whole song about Bonvo's is about is about a whole situation that happened in one day. You know what I'm saying? So the song starts was, man, this nigga KD bugging, man. So it's basically me, myself, which is, you know, which is Keelan calling my alter ego, which is KD, which is the mm-hmm. rapper. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hello. Speak. Hey, buddy, this Keelan, let me holla at KD. Speaking. Hey, buddy, was going down my killer? Fast told me just last night he was into it with nigga. So Fast is my little brother. You know what I'm saying? So, like, basically, I'm telling myself some shit that Fat said. And I'm like, and then I'm breaking down what happened in that day that made Fat say, yo, man, he was just into it with niggas. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm basically reasoning with myself behind everything that I did that day to myself with myself. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So, yo, Fat was booling and some bitch niggas start flexing, drop his location on Facebook. So we pulled up and start Jeffy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like. And, like, the whole song is just about me and myself. Basically, it's like the angel and demon arguing with each other. So, like, Keelan is more reasonable. Like, Keelan, he kind of thinks of shit from a reasonable standpoint or a logical standpoint. And KD, he just the gang, you know, he the rapper. Yeah. So, he just like, fuck that, you know, I ain't no bitch ass nigga. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm out here. Like, damn, fuck are you talking about? You know what I'm saying? So, it's, it, it's just uh, me and my alter ego. Ex- like kind of explaining what happened over the course of this day and Keelan looking at it from a standpoint of like, man, nigga, you out of control. And KD looking at it like, yeah, nah, my man, like, man, this, it gotta happen. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, we out here. Like, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. No, and that kind of goes back to what you said at the beginning of this interview, you know, like you're, you like, you, your people told you that you were really good with telling stories that you shouldn't have known or whatever at a young age, but you can tell, you can, you can still tell that you have that shit, you know, and man, it's a perfect thing. I I just like painting a picture, man. I just like, I think, I think storytelling is a, you know what I'm saying? Is a, is a lost like art in music, you know what I'm saying? And I just think, I just felt like music, you people invest, if people are going to invest their time and listening to your song, then I just think that it's, from an artist standpoint, it means so much more when you can paint them. Like, when you can close your eyes and visualize a whole song from start to finish, and then, like, open your eyes and be like, yo, I could literally walk in his shoes. The way he explained this story, I felt like I was there watching it. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it just makes the music that much more crazy. Yeah, it did, and because when I first saw that song, it was it was just you holding the phone, you know, just rapping it. You know, this was probably before you even yeah. dropped the music video. You know, what I mean, with my afro, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> was my afro on the game. Yeah, yeah, and and I could just you know visualize all the shit you were saying, you know, and it's just you know it was a great story, you know, like it's just like it was like a, even like a little mini clip because at the end you got raided or whatever, and you got busted, and they yeah. took you in. <laughs> yeah, that shit was. Uh... Which is crazy is because a couple months after I dropped that song, I really got raided. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> it was yeah. fucked up. Like, nigga, like and it kind of happened exactly how I explained it because we seen the raid coming. And, like, we was at the window like, yo, this white van just passed the crib. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And next thing you know, my dough really came in. Like, it was crazy. Like, oh, shit. Oh, my God. That's it a motherfucker. Crazy. You yeah, manifested that shit. <laughs> I swear to God I did. Well, I was, I remember sitting down there, nigga. I remember sitting in a in a holding cell like, bro, how did I see this shit coming, nigga? Like, fuck talking about. I called it. Yeah, you did. <laughs> well, shit, you out now, yeah. man. 
<laughs> oh yeah, man. We out, man. We out. We we moving good. Everything is righteous now, so we good, man. I ain't involved in no bullshit no more, man. Oh, well, that's good, man. Um, another track I, I liked off that project was uh, Forgotten. Uh, okay, so when I wrote Forgotten, Forgotten was a song. My I wrote Forgotten a long time ago, before like before I even became Pain Boy ENT. I just never put the song out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But Forgotten was just one of those tracks that just like like I just thought to myself like you know I could sit here and I could talk this gangster shit all this that you know all day. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Like sometimes I feel like you know sometimes I feel like we as artists need to need to need to speak on the real too. You know what I'm saying? And and I think like we get so much we get so wrapped up in like our own shit sometimes. You know what I'm saying? We get wrapped up so much in like like talking about money and bitches and shit that we don't really talk about the things that that led up to those moments. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So like a lot of the, a lot of like I put a lot of my own personal life into my music. You know what I'm saying? So like it those was real stories. Like rapping for a better way. You know I ain't trying to leave the ones I love behind selling gay. Father told me if I ain't got it, go and make a way. This is something that my dad really told me. You know, mama work her ass off. I promise you'll see better days. My mom works to this day, works 16 hour shifts at her job. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, uh, mama work her ass off. I promise you'll see better days. Younger sister acting up, walking around mad as fuck. And you know what I'm saying? Like my sister, she just kind of walk around like she had a chip on her shoulder. You know what I'm saying? Like, and then I be like, you know, when I uh, when I try to tell her right, she start cracking up. Say, how you selling dope and trying to preach to me? That's sad as fuck. Bro drinking bad as fuck. I'm worried about my little nigga. You know what I'm saying? Back then, my, my brother was an alcoholic. You know what I'm saying? I used to really worry about him because my dad was, was an alcoholic. You know what yeah. I'm saying? My dad died drunk. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, now being drunk didn't cause him to die, but he was drunk when he died. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? And... I was just worried about my brother because, like, at the time, I just felt like I just felt like it was just watching my dad self-destruct all over again. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And and my little brother mean more to me than anybody on this planet. You know what I'm saying? Like, this the nigga that I, I starved with. You know what I'm saying? Like, this a nigga I done slept in cars with. Like, we was homeless together. You know what I'm saying? So, mm-hmm. like, nigga, I was just worried about him. And, you know... God willing, and you know what I'm saying. God will, you know him to to kick his addiction. And my brother, he ain't touched a drink in, in three years now. You know what I'm saying. My sister, she finally ate that chip on her shoulder. You know, <laughs> should be a gay. This is what you talking about. You know what I'm saying. Uh, like we just kind of got our shit. You know, shit. I just, I just felt like, I don't know. To me, I just felt like when I wrote for God, and that was just kind of my personal way of pleading to my family. Like, cause now when me and my brother and my sister, when we go back and we listen to songs like Forgotten, we know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like we can look at each other and say, yo, that's how it was at the time. You know what I'm saying? And through the graces of God, we don't deal with that no more. So it was just one of those tracks. I just, it was a personal track, yeah. but like, you know what I'm saying? My manager, my manager, AJ, his mom passed away. And when he listened to Forgotten, it just remind like he tear up because it make him it remind him of his mom. So he was just like, "Yo, we gotta put this on the album, bro. Like it's it's too real." And I'm glad that we did because after we did that, then it started forcing me at least one or two songs every album to step out of that. You know, stop talking about the the, the gangster shit and really talk about some real shit. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I'll be honest, those are, you know, my favorite ones, too, dude. I and they had that down, you know, I got them on my Apple Music, you know, when you put those those real ones like that. I mean, oh, it's, yeah. it's it's crazy, you know, I mean, like, you know, I, re- I don't know, for some reason, that's, I've always drawn to that, you know, like, because, you know, like you said, you step out of the other stuff, and you come to that, you know, you draw in more people, you know, as well. Exactly. And I'll be honest, like, those are my favorite ones, because they're real shit. Not that I don't like the other ones, but I'm just saying, like, I can connect right. more to you know, that, you know what I mean? And, and feel it, you know, I don't know, like everybody feels different emotion from different songs, but for me personally, right. you know, those are my, the ones I connect to and draw to more. Well, see, yeah. Like, 
one of my uh, one of the big homies was telling me the reason why the real shit is always going to be respected is because struggle struggle don't have no color you know what i'm saying struggle don't struggle don't care what you is struggle don't care what race you belong to struggle doesn't care you know what i'm saying yeah. what you bang or anything struggle affects everybody you know what i'm saying so on those real shit songs you know i could explain a situation and a person is going to feel that shit because he knows that struggle struggle is a uh, is a lesson in life that everybody knows at least mm-hmm. once in their life and if they don't then i'd rather if, if you don't know struggle i'd rather you not you know what I'm saying? Because I don't want nobody to struggle because I know what it feels like to struggle. Yeah. But for them that has struggled, they're going to gravitate towards that because they like on this one song, I ain't released it yet. But uh, on the song, I say, uh, I say, uh, you got to watch who you burning after and always watch who you learning after you ever been so hungry that when the sandwich gone, you sat there and ate the last cheese off the burger wrapper. Mm-hmm. See, we not the same. Like a nigga, but like my hood, I've been that hungry before. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know I mean? like, no, that's a good one. Make, yeah. Like it just make you be like, damn. Yeah. I know. Ex- I know exactly what that nigga talking about. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? For real. So, no, yeah, that's- I love that reference. But uh, another one, you know, off that one was uh, All a Dream. You know, like how you were talking about how you, you know, people have told you you kind of resemble Biggie, you know, by your storytelling. You're not not as being big and a rapper, you know what I mean? But actually the way you speak and the shit you say. I mean, I thought that was a perfect song that you did with that. So the the way that uh, I came about doing All a Dream, it was just a Biggie reference. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, Hold on, my bad, my bad. Hold on, just give me one second. Yeah, you good. Hold up, guy. All right. Yeah, hello? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Yeah, my bad. You good, man? I should have sat my phone on, do not disturb. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> oh, no, no, good, man. Disturb. One of the homies, he hit me up. I had to tell him I was in an interview. But yeah. uh, so the Biggie, uh, the All a Dream, I mean, it was the Biggie comparisons. Like, I just kept getting the Biggie comparison. Oh, he the next Biggie. He the next Biggie. He the next Biggie. And I'm just like, yo, as much as as much as much I love that, you know what I'm saying? Because Biggie is my favorite rapper. You know what right. I'm saying? But I just felt like, he, I just felt like, man, I can't come close. But if I did come close, like when I made all the dream, I wanted to take all of Biggie's new music or old music and give it a new spin. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I took, I wrote like, I think when I wrote the verses for all the dream, I used Biggie's formula to like four different songs. You yeah, know what I'm did. saying? So in the beginning, it was all a dream. I used the low Tendo magazine. So that was juicy. And then, uh, I used uh, when I die, fuck it. I want to go to hell because I'm a be brazy ass nigga. You yeah. can tell. So I used uh, suicidal thoughts, and then it was um, uh, there was a part where I was like, uh, bitches bought me, bitches bought me pops at lunch. The pop was sun kissed. The chips was funny. Mm-hmm. So there's the sky's <laughs> the limit. Like I just used like four different formulas of his of his songs that meant the most to me. Like, these are my favorite Biggie songs. So Juicy, Suicidal Thoughts, Sky is the Limit. These are my favorite Biggie songs. You know what I'm saying? So I use my favorite Biggie songs and just put my own twist to them. And then I use a lot of those, uh, the choruses from those songs to build my hook. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I already, I always knew, like, I knew it was going to be impossible to get it clear. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, I knew you're not going to get these classics clear yeah. you know what i'm saying but i put it out just because i wanted people to know like it was my way of paying homage to my favorite rapper you know yeah. what i'm saying like so that's kind of where the inspiration behind all the dream came from yeah and exactly like you said too you know it doesn't matter if it didn't get cleared but still that song you know kick that motherfucker was fire and it needed to be, be you know be out there like that you know what i mean yeah exactly i mean i got mixed reviews about it some people loved it while well, a lot of people loved it 
some people kind of hated on it, like, ah, oh, man, you just you disrespected a legend. And I'm just what like, it's never disrespect. It's never disrespect. And the reason why it's never going to be disrespect is because it'll be different if I was in the song proclaiming my, I've never proclaimed myself as the next big. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I've never, I've never disrespected what I look at, well, who, you know, someone I revere as a guy to music, you know what I'm saying? I can only, I can only take the road that he laid for me and walk it for him because yeah. his, he passed away. You know what I'm saying? So the best thing I can do is walk the walk, continue to walk this road that he's unable to walk himself. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Respectfully. Yeah, exactly. So, and you did. Exactly. So that's why I kind of felt the, uh, the inspiration behind all the dream came from. Yeah. I think you did a great job on that one, man, for real. I appreciate it, bro. Uh, moving on to Gallons 3, um, Reminiscing was one of my favorite ones on there. Like I said, I like Ooh. that real shit. <laughs> man, I'm going to be honest with you. It took me probably a month and a half to write Reminiscing, to be honest with you. just I just could not write the song without tearing up. You know what I'm saying? Like, like yeah. on some real, on some gangster shit. Reminiscent was one of them songs that I just felt like, like I number one, when I wrote the song, I never wrote the song intending to put it out. This was a personal track. You know what yeah. I'm saying? For me, like, because I'm talking about a friend of mine that committed suicide. I'm talking about my own life. Like, I just don't, I never wanted anybody to feel like, you know, I don't, as much bullshit as I've been through in my life, I don't ever want nobody to be able to like be like, oh, this nigga just complaining about how his life is so bad. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it wasn't. Like, I never looked at it like that. I looked at, at it from a sense of like, nigga, I'm speaking about like how many people feels the same way. So the way that it started is reminiscing off of my mind wonders. My pride covers this pressure. I could never allow y'all to see that I'm under. You can see the sand far as the sky covers. And drop so many tears of blood that literally my eyes suffer. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. so when I started writing it, you know, but when I started getting into the personals about it, you know what I'm saying? It's just, it was just like, man, it was just, it was too much. It was too much. Like, I put a lot of my own personal life into that song. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then, so I wrote the whole song. I wrote the hook, too. I just can't sing for shit. You know what I'm saying? So I wrote everything to that song you know what i'm saying i got a, a good friend of mine his name is justin i met him down while we was down in atlanta you know what i'm saying and um i just remember i, I walked into the studio one time i heard him singing and as soon as i heard his voice i just knew i was like oh hello yeah, you oh, yeah. as soon as i walked in and heard his voice i was like oh he gonna be perfect he's yeah, perfect he killed so, that shit you know what i'm saying so i i, I um i recorded my shitty ass singing version of it <laughs> and then let him go home and study it for a couple of days. And then he came back to the studio and recorded it. And mind you, when we recorded it, like it still got, I, I think that it, the way that we recorded it was fucked up only because like it was supposed to be monotone, but it sound kind of, it sound like it's not compressed enough. Like even when I go back and listen to it, like it sounds like it's too reverby, you know what I'm saying? Like it's too airy. Yeah. And and I wanted it, I wanted it to be real. I wanted to be, I wanted it to be compressed and sound just like I don't know, like when I wrote it, I wrote it with like Kendrick Lamar's voice in my mind. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But uh overall, you know what I'm saying? I was uh I appreciate the way it did came come out, man, and I appreciate like people that listen to that side of my story, like that was one of the few times that I, I went out on a limb and was just like, yo, I'm really going to tell the real. If I'm going to tell the real, I'm going to tell the real, real. You know what I'm saying? That's why, mm -hmm. like, even I feel like when a person be like, yo, uh, you know, so-and-so committed suicide. You know what I'm saying? I think, like, I think it's weird that a person will look at you weird if you ask, like, how? You know what I'm saying? That's why when I say... A friend of mine committed suicide. He hung himself. When I found out, all the nigga could do was cry. Like, because I feel like like suicide is such a broad term, but I think you get, it becomes more personal when you figure out exactly what they did. You know what I'm saying? Because it, it 
I think how a person commits suicide kind of tells the story within itself as well. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I wanted to, if I'm just going to be like, you know, if I'm going to be transparent about the situation, I'm going to be all the way transparent about it. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I included not only the fact that he committed su suicide, but how he did it. And I called and got, you know, the blessing from his family to be able to put that in the song. Man, it was just, it was an emotional track, man. Yeah, no, absolutely. Sick. No, I can, I, I hear it, man. I mean, I, I heard it. I listened to it over and over. You know, it's a good one. And, you know, I, you know, I think people, you know, will appreciate you, you more, you know, like when you put, you know, shit like that out there, because then they get to hear, you know, your background and shit you went through struggles that you went through and how you are still pushing past these and going even harder, you know what I mean? With your music. You right. Know? You know, that, that came out perfect, though. I appreciate it, man. Yeah. Another one off this, uh, you know, project was uh, Smoking Lessons Part 2. Spoken Lessons Part 2 was, um, that was kind of my song to where it's just like, so Spoken Lessons Part 1 was a was a song that I put out on YouTube that mm -hmm. I never put on any of my albums. Spoken Lesson Part 2, the reason why I chose to put that on my album is because it's just like a spoken lesson, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I'm trying to teach somebody some shit, you know what I'm saying? And then in one of my songs, I, uh, I remember putting, uh, so you should... So you should focus on the spoken lesson. Like I was just talking my shit, but then I actually made it a, a series because it's just like I'm speaking some real shit. You know what I'm saying? Like you better listen when the deacon's speaking. You feel know I me? Mean? Like <laughs> yeah. it's real shit though. Yeah, that's what I thought too. That's what that was a perfect name for that song. You know, per, uh, spoken lessons. You know what I mean? Because right. I mean, you know, and then the video was also dope as fuck too that you did. Yeah, the it. video. The video was a uh, was a biggie inspired type video. Yeah. Like I remember my managers just like, yo, we gotta make you look like a boss. Like you gotta <laughs> look like like a mobster, nigga. Like we gotta go get you. We gotta go get you the three piece double breast joint. Yeah. You know, with the red under joint. You know what I'm saying? And I was trying to get the. Uh, I wanted my my red jacket to be a red bandana jacket with a oh, red bandana yeah. tie. Like the way that I had it planned out was nuts but i couldn't get it in time you know yeah. what i'm saying but yeah. nigga like it's so that's why i just bought my red flag with it man and then i had the crazy ass red and purple dress like it was crazy yeah yeah another one well, a lot of people won't know we shot that whole video in a studio like really? in a music studio like yeah what the fuck that's that fucking whole crazy video was shot in a music in the same music studio we recorded it in. No <laughs> cap. God yeah. damn, dude. So you know, yeah, you, you just never know when you can be inspired to, you know, what areas. You know, you never know exactly. When, like you just look at the location, and one one day it's kind of like you know you put it in the back of your mind, but then one day it kind of presents itself, and you're like, damn, this would be a dope spot to take a fucking video shoot Man. or some shit, you know. Man, we just had a dope ass videographer, man. Like Vado, 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 he when he first like started getting started, he was already considered one of the greatest videographers from our like region. Like, you know, he cause Vado, he was he was either like I believe he from Omaha or from Lincoln, but Vado, he started he got his start here. He moved to Atlanta now, but he was already the best videographer here. Or amongst Damn. one of the best videographers here. So when we chose when we when we chose to go like with a song like Spoken Lesson, we was just like, yo, we can't half step. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like just can't be your your typical hood, you know, video. Like, no, like this gotta be cinematic. Like this yeah. gotta be a movie. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, and then the two girls in the video is my manager, Crystal, her daughter and her niece. You know, so that's yeah, that's uh, that's my nigga Tay and my nigga Sanaya. Like, you know what I'm they them is like my nieces. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And like, that was even like like the way that that came about. We was like, yo, we gonna make them like dead ballerinas. And I just remember like thinking to myself like, how the fuck is that gonna work? And the way he tied all that shit together, I was like, oh, that's dope. Yeah, dude. That's see, that's what's the perk of having you know hiring you know people that are professionals with that shit. You know, they have their own fucking creative ideas they throw in, and they can you just tell them some shit, and they're like, "Oh, here you go, boom, 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 do this, do exactly. that." Exactly. Yeah, he made it work, man. He made it happen for sure, man.
you invested in that shit, and so it came out fucking perfect. <laughs> a uh, you know, going to Gallons too. Uh, Bring the Pain was one of the oh, first ones off there. I was going to mention. I fucking love that song. That's one of my favorites of my own. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Bring the Pain was man the Wu Tang Clan man. Yep. Just when you think you can't talk hip hop and not speak of Wu Tang, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, specifically out of Wu Tang. So my three favorite, uh, my three favorite people from the Wu Tang Clan was Old Dirty Bastard, yep. Method Man, and uh, and what's the name? And um, Goddamn and Quan, yeah, right? Yeah, so, yeah. so uh, I just remember like now I'm I'm I knew I wanted so out of when I wrote Bring the Pain, I was going I, I had three beats in mind. I was I was either going to use Cream, I was going to mm. use Protect Your Neck from the Clan, or I was just going to use uh. You know what I'm saying? The, uh, the bring the pain from Method Man's bring the pain. Yeah. So as I'm listening, I, I think I listened to those three instrumentals for like 24 hours. Just keep on running it back, running them back before I started writing. And it was just something. It was just something about the doom, 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 doom. Like, nigga, that shit just hit me different. Like, every time the beat came on, all I could think. Like when I'm even the way that I began, it was the shimmy, shimmy, y'all, shimmy, yeah, shimmy, yay, yeah, yay. Yeah. Like it was just crazy. Like I was in my room going nuts. You know what I'm saying? So then I was like, okay, so I got the beat that I wanted. I'm going to use Bring the Pain. Now, how am I going to rap on it? So I went back and I studied Method Man's, you know what I'm saying? His, his verse. And I was just like, I want to come completely different from Method, but I want to, I want to, I want to slaughter the shit too, lyrically. So I just, you know, that's when I had to step into my biggie bag. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I just was like, you know, I'm going to just biggie this joint. I'm going to just go like biggie. You know, and I was like, you have just now morphed into a different plane of existence. Clinch fish removed niggas think like a dentist. Like, and I just started going on that joint. And that's just how that came about, man. I just was like, fuck it, man. I'm not, ain't no, ain't no, I'm not going to have no breakdowns. I ain't going to use no hooks, no court, nothing. I'm going to just rap. Yeah, yeah. No, that motherfucker was dope as fuck, dude. I like how you broke that shit down. You know, because you like you said, you had three different beats in mind. I mean, probably yeah, a lot man. of people didn't know that shit. Oh yeah, man. I just went at a lot of. That's how a lot of my shit come. Like, nigga, I say for like every CD I do ten tracks for, I probably listen to like forty beats and chose out of the best forty. Damn. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's a process. Yeah, and I, I'm sure, man. What what kind of is your? I guess you know the whole process of you know coming out with your albums and projects and stuff. Well, like number one, I always try to choose beats that kind of roll into each other. You know what I'm saying? Like I always, I kind of build my albums kind of like how Lil Wayne built the No Ceilings, like his yeah. No Ceilings. Like I always wanted my albums to be something that you could just you could just start listening to and don't have to skip songs. Like you could mm -hmm. just play song after song after song. So that's why. A lot of my music, and I, I found that like I found like whenever I live, whenever I put out an album, trust me, I've listened to the album probably like two hundred times before I even put it out. But I'd be so done listening to my music before I even put my album out because I've heard it so many times. Yeah. Then I'm a like I. It's not a song I put out unless I run it past my little brother. My little brother has always been my harshest critic. You know what I'm saying? So. If I have a song, I'm a before I even go and lay it, I rap it to my brother. My brother be like, yeah, that's it. No, you should change this. No, speak on this. You know what I'm saying? That's not it. Things like that. So I'll listen to it a hundred times. Then me and my brother will listen to it a hundred times. And then I'll have a listening party with just everybody involved in my music, my family, you know, my family's family. We all just go to the studio, listen to it. And then when everybody be like, yeah, I like the order of that. I can listen to that all the way through. Then I'll put the album out. As far as writing music, my uh, believe it or not, I write, I I write weird because I listen to the beat and then, but whenever I'm at like physically writing the words down, or I, so I write all my music in my in my iPhone on my notes, right. and whenever I'm actually physically writing down the words, the beat isn't playing. So I'll listen to it, pause the beat write down like a bar or two, then go back, play the beat from the beginning, spit the bar or two, pause the beat, start writing three more bars, then go back, listen to it from the beginning. Like I just keep on going forward and backwards the whole time until the whole song is done. 
no i mean that's probably the best way to fucking really do it though too you know because then you know what kind of where your verse is your verse and shit's gonna lay at when you're actually rapping it you know what i mean like what sounds gonna be coming and then like what i'll do is i'll choose like a bar so like i'll I'll say something in my head and be like oh that shit gonna be hard so what I'll do is I'll place that bar at the end. Like, I know I want to end my punchline on this bar, and then I'll build the words and the structure around that bar. You know what oh, I'm okay. saying? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So, like, like, uh, like, in Bring the Pain, when I was like, bitch, I'll sell your dog dope long as the bitch got money. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I think of that line first. Place that bar at the end, and then build – all of the words I'm going to say to go into that bar. Like, I just got a weird process to write music. Yeah. Well, I, I, I fuck with it, man. That's cool. What is, uh, okay. So uh, another one I was kind of interested in was, uh, Brazy, you know, big Y, you know, cause I've, I've done an interview with him, you know, when I first started doing this shit, you know, and I've listened to his music since I was a kid, you know, back in fucking middle school. So I was like, I seen him share your shit one time and i was like what the fuck this dude's from nebraska you know what i mean and i was like yeah what the fuck so kind of explain <laughs> that relationship with him how did all that shit come about well big y is the big homie me and right. big y we both from crenshaw mafia you know what i'm saying so yeah. you know uh the cali cali came out here to nebraska back then like i can't tell you exactly what year but i know cali came out here Back when Cali started expanding the Bloods and the Crips to all the regions, you know what I'm saying, in all different parts, they came out to Nebraska. When they was when they they were set to come out here and uh or go to Missouri, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying. And Ice Cube even speak of this on summer vacation, like where he was talking about he was going to St. Louis and Missouri and stuff like that. They stopped down in Nebraska, and the big homies from Crenshaw Mafia came down here and put Nebraska on game. So uh, the the Crenshaw, the 104 Crenshaw Mafia is in the 107, West Side 107 Hoover Creek came down here and they was dropping off, they was dropping off big product, you know, down here. Like they needed to leave California because California was too hot. So they was coming down here, you know what I'm saying, to, to get their money. And yeah. when they came down here, you know, they met niggas down here. It was like, oh shit, you know, it's niggas here. You know what I'm saying? Cause a lot of people don't know black people was in Nebraska. You know yeah. what I'm saying? No, so, no. So they was like, yo, they just basically passed their way of life on us. So they was just like, yo, this is what it means to gang bang. You know, we bloods and we this, that, and other. And the blood niggas came down here and put us on. And the Crips came down and put the other side on. You know what I'm saying? And, and then we just started banging like Cali. So when we first started banging, you know, they was banging Crenshaw Mafia here. They was banging 107 over Crip. But then after, you know, the Omaha niggas kind of got the the concept of what banging is about and started getting their own money. You know, uh, the the Crenshaw Mafia is because we don't have a, a Crenshaw Street or a, a 104 Street out here. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And they, it was like they basically passed their way of life but blessed us to, like, be able to bang our own shit. Like, he was like, well, find something in Nebraska that you can represent to put your heart into it. You know what I'm saying? Like you'll put your heart in something if you believe it's yours. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So then that's what we, we established the Vietnam projects down here. And that's where the Vietnam, the first bloods down here was the Vietnam bloods. You know what I'm saying? The Vietnam project bloods, or that's not what they call it. They just call it Vietnam. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And then a dispute happened between the, between the West side 107 Hoover Crips and the Crips that was down here. So they was just like, you know, fuck that. We just going to adopt our own shit. And that's how 40th Ave came about. Damn. And so 40th Ave was amongst one of the first Crips sets down here. So it was the 40th Ave Crips and the Vietnam Bloods. You know what I'm saying? And then they just started, you know, branching out. So Vietnam turned in the 16th and Victor and then started going up to Deuce Boat and Deuce Nine and then... 40th Ave went out to Fofo and then, and then you know, uh, uh, the Hoovers came down and we got Trey Seven Hoovers and then everybody just started getting it. Like once the city st- really started seeing this blood and crypt shit taking off, people just started establishing their own blocks. You know what I'm saying? And that's kind of how the Bloods and Crips came down. So with me, when I first started getting into banging, my dad was a West Side 107 Hoover Crip. You know what I'm saying? So when I was growing up, I, I was raised by Crips. Damn. And I just knew at, at a young age just how my dad and shit, my dad and my 
my uncles and shit was acting, I just knew I didn't want to be no crip. You know what I'm saying? Like, I remember when I was young, I was like, nah, I'm not. Mind you, like, when I was growing up, I had no idea what blood and crip was. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, my dad, when you raised in a household full of crips and they don't really break down to you what it is, then, like, literally, in my opinion, I, I never say that I was a crip, but I was just like, through association, I acted just like one. You know what I'm saying? And I just remember being in middle school and me going up to my homeboy, Larry, and I'm just like, you know, I I cussed him hard. You know what I'm saying? Like, I walked up to him like, hey, what's good with it? And my, my nigga Larry was like, hey, you know what I'm saying? Like, we homies and shit, but don't do that. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, what you talking about? And he was just like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm not that. You know, I'm a blood. And I'm just like, what, what do you mean? And he was just like, he kind of broke it down to me, but I didn't get it. So then I just, I remember going to my computer lab and just looking up, what is a blood in the crib? And I start reading and I start seeing what, you know, what the shit was. And I'm just like, oh, well, nigga, in that case, I definitely ain't no crib. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I'm definitely, I'm, I'm rocking with the red side. You know what I'm saying? So as I was growing up, I was just like, man, you know what? I'm a blood. I'm out here. You know what I'm saying? There's blood on mine. And then when I went to the job corps, shit just got real. Like, I started kicking it with bloods from a set, and one of the bloods was my guy, Stewie. or We called him Damu. And uh, Damu, he was from Crenshaw Mafia. You know what I'm saying? And and I just I went home with him on, a, with week, on Weekend Pass from the center one time, and his family was there. And uh, his uncle, LB, he was an OG from the Moxie, and he just walked up to me, and he was like, hey, you know what I'm saying? You want to, you, you, you and my, you and my nephew, y'all niggas, you know, y'all like best friends, y'all niggas like brothers, you know what I'm saying? You want to be from the hood? And I'm like, yeah, now, I, you know, I'm, I'm a blood already, but I'm like, you know, I ain't from no hood, so I'm like, hell yeah, I want to be from the hood. Nigga just stole on me, nigga. Me and the OG started going at it. Nigga, like, what you talking about? <laughs> and nigga, that's how I got my my end. You know what I'm saying? That's how I got put on, and it's been a mafia since, man. Yeah. So man. when I reached out to Big Y, you know, I told Big Y, you know, I'm I'm one of the homies now. I'm from the mafia and shit. Me and Y, we spoke on Facetime. We had a, a real conversation, and he seen that I I knew what I was talking about, and you know, Big Y, he just. He just, man, Big Y, he loved music, you know what I'm saying? And he loved, you know what I'm saying? So it was kind of like a double standard. Like, number one, he just going to help me just off of the strength of the fact that we we represent the same thing. But amongst that, you know what I'm saying, we also men. And he also, like, when he sees something that he believes in, he go hope full-heartedly, you know, wholeheartedly. Yeah. And, like, when he just heard me, he just was just like, man, bro, well, I've listened to a lot of people rap, and I've been around rap for a long time. But you, my nigga, you got it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And so he just, you know, he just he put me on this platform with the, you know what I'm saying, with the with the belief that like, yo, you actually have the talent to do something with it. And like amongst the fact that you know that you you from the mafia as well is the fact that I believe in you. I would be less of a person if I didn't use, you know, the necessary tools to help you get where you need to go. Yeah. You know and he should... Oh, go ahead. Yeah, so that's kind of how that came about. And you made a... And you guys end up making a song together, you know, through that so, relationship. So so when I wrote Brazy, I just wrote Brazy. I wrote Brazy kind of like with that cocky, you know, blood attitude. So mm. you're like, you know, like, you know, this shit Brazy. Nigga, what hood you claim, you know? Big Wise, he was like a brother to him, but I just felt like, you know, B. Brazy, he was a blood. He from uh, he from Denver Lanes, you know what I'm saying? Like, any yeah, blood that's a blood know who B. Brazy is, you know what yeah. I'm saying? With the whole Damu Rider movement he had. So, like, when I first, uh, I used to call myself too Brazy because I was just, I wanted to be B. Brazy number two. Like, I used to go to school dressed like B. Brazy. I used to dress, you know, in the Tan khaki khaki suit. red chucks, yeah. the, the, the red sweater, you know what I'm saying? The, you know, the red sweater with the my hair was long. I had the big dookie braids. Like, Did I you? thought I was too crazy <laughs> for real, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then, you know what I'm saying? And, and so when I made Brazy, you know what I'm saying? I, I reached out to Big Y and I was like, yo, I got this song called Brazy. Man, I, I really want you on it. And Y was like, well, send it to me. 
I said it to him, and Blood hit me back, and he was just like, oh, they're on the mafia. I'm on this. You know what I'm saying? And he he, he ripped that shit, and it was a good way. Like, that was, at, at the end, he was like an Inglewood, Nebraska, mafia lanes. Yeah. This shit crazy. Like, it was just kind of like he, he definitely helped me get a name for myself amongst us collectively. You know what I'm saying? Like, Crenshaw Mafia all over the map now. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. – it was also my way of paying homage to where it began and it started. It started in the wood. You know what I'm saying? So what better how what better to do than to go and get, you know what I'm saying? Somebody not only that I revered, you know what I'm saying? And uh, somebody I see is my big homie and my OG, but also from the turf. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't get more original than that. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like if I'm going to get somebody from the mafia, it's got to be big Y. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And that's how that song came about. No, absolutely. And I, you know, like I said, you know, as a kid, I listened to his music and I remember one of his songs, you know, he was like banging on, banging mafia from Inglewood to Nebraska. You know, I can't remember what song that was, but he said it on the banging on wax album. And I was like, holy shit. <laughs> Big facts, man. We out here. Yeah. No, I mean, that, that's cool. You know, though, that relationship, because he does share your, your post from time to time, you know, and, you know, that definitely got to bring in some. You know, like you said, people from, you know, you know, the music industry, Bloods and everything else, you know, to, oh, yeah. to you, you know. And oh, yeah. So we, I, just was talking to y. I just talked to Y this morning. Me and Y, we talk every day. You know For what real? I'm saying? And he, every day. Damn. I talk to Y every day. You know what I'm saying? And he just, he, he, we, we go over a lot. You know what I'm saying? We go over where it started, where it began you know, where it's at, where it's going, you know what I'm saying? And he just gives me, he just gives me the insight that I need because he's walked some of the places that I'm trying to walk to, you know what I'm saying? So Big Y, he, he serves as not only just, you know what I'm saying, some a knowledgeable, you know, OG of mine, but he also serves as the knowledgeable person in the music industry. He can tell me where he stepped that he shouldn't have stepped and where he should have stepped and didn't step, you know what I'm saying? So he just, you know, he oversees where I'm stepping and gives me insight, gives me advice, give me game, you know what I'm saying? Like that, he's a big help, man. That's why I got nothing but love and respect for why. Not only for everything that he's done, but everything he helps me to continue to do as well. Yeah, and he's absolutely, you know, perfect for that position, you know, to help people out, you know, because he's he's been through it. And then, you know, especially – you know, coming from where you're coming from, you know, he really does help you out a lot. And he's exactly. good at giving advice. You know, the interview exactly. I did with him was, you know, fucking beyond what I expected, dude. And, you know, for that, I was just like, yeah, dude, even more respect, you know, because he was down to doing with me, you know, when I just started. So he's definitely a good dude for real. Factuals. Uh, so I guess, you know, kind of moving on to like a recent one that your song that really blew up was Ski Mask. You know, what, what you know, what kind of made that one blow off, you know, because I've seen, you know, lots and lots of people that I know, because, you know, like I said, I'm from Nebraska, too, you know, I'm, I live in Grand mm -hmm. Island, you know, so what what was, you know, so fucking, you know, what made that song pop off? Because it has a million views now. Man, I think, I think it's just like, okay, so I, I think a couple of factors, like, leaned into it. I think Ski Mask was one of my, was a song that showed, you know, people that supported me, my fans, and as well as the music industry, that you can't put me in a box. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That no matter what, I'm still able to kick my street shit, but I'm still able to have fun, too. You know what I'm saying? So I was sitting in the studio when I wrote Ski Mask, and I just remember when the beat, the dun, 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 drop. I'm just like, okay, it still got a little vibe to it. You know, so I wanted to make I wanted to make like a, a super catchy hook, you know what I'm saying? Because my, when I started writing music, all I knew was rap. I, I couldn't write choruses worth the fuck, but yeah. I couldn't write hooks for shit. You know what I'm saying? So I just ski mask came with a 50 round drum. Hey, fucking up niggas whole summer. Hey, like I was getting hyped and shit in the music uh, in the studio while I was writing this shit. And then when it came down to the uh, to the verse. Like I said, I was just, it's just a perfect mix of me kicking my shit, but still having fun. My favorite part was like, I had, had the, I had the Majin symbol on my head. So like, you know what I'm saying? I, I made a, the Dragon Ball Z reference that Super Saiyan like Vegeta, break a nigga down the cells, toss him in the freezer. I'm a Majin meaning evil on my Kai shit. So my swag, I supremed it. Like I was like, oh nigga, 
I'm going crazy. Man. It was crazy. Yeah. It was crazy. So I think that's just like, that's what helped the song was just like the playful nature of it, but the bounce, you know what I'm saying? The yeah. bounce of it. And then like, we had some fine shorties, you know what I'm saying? In the video, like we had the little Asian shorty, you know what I'm saying? I know the Asian shorty personally. That's my nigga, Baby G. You know what I'm saying? And then we had a, we just, we went out to this local, uh, we went out to this local strip club and got the baddest <laughs> strippers in there. It was just like, yo, or the baddest dancers. I don't want to disrespect them, so I'm just dancers. And we got them, to, you know what I'm saying, slide through and help. And, man, it was just the crazy. Then we had a pyro team there. Like, we was just doing yeah. shit. <laughs> yeah, they were, had the fire down their fucking throat and all that shit, too. Uh, Yeah, that shit was nuts. Uh. Hold on, one. I'm, okay, I'm gonna be fat for a hot second. Look, I think mean, they got that two for six on them two fish sandwiches. Let me get two of those and a Mickey chick. Make that shit. And a matter of fact, no, I, I scratched that. I want the two for six on the the fish sandwich in the uh, in the in the nuggets with a little ranchy ranch and a Mick chick. Yes, sir. Shit, man, that's I'm what I gotta get. Me, I'm finna crash that shit when it gets to the bread. Huh? Uh, I don't know. My battery finna die. Like, I think, how much long we got? Like, like 10, 15 more minutes? Yeah, yeah. That's cool. Yeah, that, that's cool. About 10 more minutes. It should be done by the time y'all get back. For sure. All right, give me a, a large diet Dr. Pep, too. I got you. I don't want, I want him to keep all that. You know what I'm saying? Like, what are you talking about? I'm a fat nigga for real. Fuck. Yeah. That shit, it's lunchtime. You know what I mean? You know, you know, I ain't even eight today, man. As soon as I woke up, I swear when I woke up, I was like, please don't tell me it's 12 o'clock. Okay, let's go. All right. I <laughs> no, made it. I know, shit. I woke up at fucking 11, dude. I was like, oh, fuck. Yeah, <laughs> you know, man. luckily it's the alarm and shit. You know. Man, I'm not going to lie to you, man. I used to, like, I, I had a PR that used to set me up with interviews all the time. And I eventually, we eventually split ways is because I used to hate doing interviews. But I see how, I see how, like, how much I've slipped on that, uh, you know, that opportunity. Like, you need interviews is because the interviews give you a personal insight on the yeah. person that the music doesn't. Because I think, like, a lot of people tell me when they meet me that they intimidated by me because of the music I make. But then yeah. you meet me and realize, yo, this nigga funny as shit. Like, <laughs> oh, this thing, this thing, I love being goofy. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, I love playing. I love being funny. You know what I'm saying? So, and that's what the interviews is for. So, like, anytime, bro. Like, I, I love doing these interviews now. Yeah, no, no. I feel it, too. You know I mean? That's what I always tell, you know, everybody that comes on, you know, that, you know, you know, everybody knows you for the work you do. You know, the music you, you put out, but they don't really, they, they get a little bit of a glimpse of you, but they don't get to hear you, like, you know, say talk shit for an hour, you know, and like get exactly. to really get to know your personality and all that shit. So it definitely fucking helps. You know, I get, yeah. uh, well, another thing I was going to kind of bring up, you know, uh, was like, so I know I remember you popping off, you know, maybe a year or two ago, you know, you were going to like Georgia, L.A., I think you were you, maybe in New York, you know, you were do, performing, yeah. you know, with Treyway and all that shit. Like, was there a lot of record deals coming at you at one time or like what was the whole yeah, situation so, with that? So I'm going to tell you, uh, everybody that I've sat down with, I've sat down with St. Haraway from uh, from Universal Republic. I've sat down with Success Ready from Atlantic, Gary Leon from Atlantic. Um. Uh, Lenny S. from Rock Nation. Uh, Kevin Lyles from 300. And I got all the pictures to prove it. Like, literally, like, I've, I've been, I've met, sat down, talked record deals with them. St. Haraway, he was, uh, he was, he wanted to offer me. He gave me an offer. He submitted an offer. And, uh, and Lenny S. was, Lenny S. Enduro, CEO, was going to submit an offer. What happened was because I was involved with the whole Treyway situation at the end, I don't want nobody. And when I say the Treyway situation, a person's mind, I'm to first I'm to think like six, nine, six, nine was part of the whole situation. I've met him, know him. I know Danny, but 
I was involved with Shoddy. You know what I'm right. saying? Not Six Nine in particular. Like Six Nine was somebody I just seen when he came through the studio. You know what I'm saying? But it was me and Shoddy that had, you know what I'm saying, uh, understanding. And what had happened was was I was going I was going to roll with Treyway because I believed in what Shoddy was trying to accomplish. You know what I'm saying? Shoddy was basically Shoddy had a street mentality, and because I'm a street nigga, I was gonna roll with that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So Shoddy was trying to establish himself like the skinny Shug. You know what I'm saying? Like he wanted to, he wasn't asking nobody for nothing. He was trying to take it. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? He was like, yo, the, the game is for the taking and we here for it. You know what I'm saying? But like they didn't have a situation together. You know, Shoddy didn't, a lot of things that they say, you know, a person can sit back and say they should have did or they shouldn't do. You know, I think Shoddy's biggest step that he, you know what I'm saying, that he fucked up was his business wasn't right, his paperwork wasn't right. You know what I'm saying? And I think as an artist, a lot of people hear music, but they don't hear the second word, which is business. It's a music yeah. business. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And I think a lot of people need to focus more on the business and not so much as the music. If you got good music, the business is going to come. You know what I'm saying? So make sure your business is set up. And I just felt like, there was a lot of things that happened within, you know, Treyway, partic- the politics of Treyway and Nine Trey and all of that, that mm-hmm. I didn't have nothing personally to do with. You know what I'm saying? Like, because that was whatever they had going. I was walking into a what you would call an already sinking ship. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Because yeah. certain things was done between Danny and Shadi. You know what I'm saying? That I didn't have anything to do with. You know what I'm saying? So when I walked in... You know, it looked good from the outside. There was already internal problems already starting. You know what I'm saying? I was actually living in North New Jersey when the whole situation went down. When Shadi fell, when Shadi got arrested, we were in New Jersey. You know what I'm mm. saying? Working under four gallons was made in Shadi's studio. Fuck. I dropped four gallons out of Treyway's studio. Damn. You know what I'm saying? I recorded all of the songs that was on uh, four gallons with Treyway with with Martian on the beat, you know, which is uh, one of Treyway's producers. That's you know what I'm saying? At a at a studio in in, in the oranges in in uh yeah in the oranges in New, in New Jersey. You know what I'm saying? It was a, at a studio that we called the Dog Pit. You know what I'm saying? This is where Shadi brought all of the artists. So it was me, Alshon Martin, uh, Bag Chase and Biggs, Alexis Sky, uh, Fetty Wap. All like this is where everybody like we all met up at, you know what I'm saying at at the dog pit. So when that whole situation had popped off, Big Y actually called out after the situation where they had went to uh where they had went to uh to California, got into it with uh with Slim Four Hundred and them. You know what I'm saying? Um, Y called me and Y was like, "Yo." this situation is too brazy. I want you to separate yourself from that situation right now because the politics behind it, I don't want you caught up in a politics. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Because they went out there and got into it with, you know, with some of the some of the bloods from, you know, natively. Like, if you think, you know what I'm saying, what I bang and what I bang out of, natively, we side with the West because the West put us on. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't want to deal with the politics. So when Y told me to separate myself, I started separating myself. You know what I'm saying? I didn't, I didn't have shit to do with that situation. After Shadi, after Shadi had a, uh, after Shadi had went down, we left immediately because we almost got caught up with the whole feds. Like the feds came and seized the town home that Shadi was paying for that we was living in. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I, we was just sitting there when the feds came. We was just like, look. We from rappers from Nebraska. You can look at our IDs. We not from here. We ain't got shit to do with this situation. We can grab our shit and bounce. Yeah. And like, okay, well, you know, grab y'all stuff, leave. So we grabbed our stuff and, and drove from New Jersey. We drove from New Jersey to Philly. Chuck the deuce with, you know, with all of our people at Philly. So we was good with Gilly and uh, uh, my name R. Dot which is Reese, Reese Murder, producer, great producer out of Philly. Um, uh, all of our homeboys and connections up at Philly. Then we drove from Philly down to Atlanta yeah. and started up. 
and all of these deals was on the table at the same time. So when the Treyway situation fell through, I started reaching back out to Saint and these other people who I had meetings with. And, uh, man, fucked around. One day I was asleep, man, and the fucking U.S. Marshals came to our house and uh, and apprehended me because I had a, a warrant out for my arrest because while we was out doing that whole thing, I missed a court date back at home for some bullshit I had did back in 2018. I missed the court date. They put a warrant out for my arrest, and the U.S. Marshals came and seized me and uh, extradited me back to Nebraska Damn. from out and all of the deals fell through because I went to jail. And I was in jail for like six months. You know what I'm saying? So when I got out, I just got out and picked up the pieces of where I was at and just started doing everything I can. And now I'm starting to, like, name my my motherfucking, uh, my Instagram got banned. My TikTok got banned. My Instagram got banned at 150,000 followers. I know. What the fuck was it? Why? What happened? People just keep report like I just keep getting reported on like people. Like, so my TikTok got took and it's because people start reporting me saying that I was using racial slurs because I said nigga in my music. <laughs> <laughs> so they, I was like, well, number one, I am a nigga. And number two, <laughs> it's music. Like last yeah. I checked, I had the freedom to express myself the way I wanted to. Right. And I guess not. So they banned my they banned my TikTok that had a hundred and four thousand followers. That's and then fuck. they found Instagram for the same reason. So then I made a second Instagram. I got the second Instagram up to a hundred thousand followers, and they banned that. No, they didn't ban it. It got a. Uh, it got a. Uh, it got stolen. It got hacked. What? They hacked my Instagram and sold what? the page off to somebody else. What? Like the they tried f- to hack me, or they hacked me, and then they uh, wrote me. I wrote. So I made the new Instagram. And they wrote me from my Instagram page and said, yo, if you want this Instagram page back, you got to pay me $300. And I told them niggas, and I, I wrote them back, and I said, boy, I'm as American as American can get because I don't negotiate with terrorists. You got me fucked up. I'm a gangster. You know, yeah. you got to extort me for no Instagram page. That's so and, stupid. So now I made another one. Now I'm back up to like 36 or 37,000 followers. And it's cool, man. I ain't tripping. Yeah. You know, like, the territory. Yeah. And like, if you could do, if you did it before, you could do it again. You know exactly. what I mean? It's Putting just going to be, stressing. I just feel like God gives his, his, his toughest battles to his toughest soldiers. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And that's Absolutely. just what it is, man. Like, you know, I, I know I'm a controversial rapper because of, you know, what I rap about and, you know, I'm just not no giddy ass nigga. You know what I'm saying? I'm not finna sit back and play. Like, like I said, and bring the pain, nigga. Fuck peace. I love destruction, nigga. Fuck <laughs> is you talking about? I love this shit. Yeah. What are you talking about? Like, I love, I love the, the the politics that come behind this shit because I mean, at the end of the day, my nigga, like this is what my life is like, bro. I grew up in the projects, bro. I yeah. grew up in the. This is not. This is, this is, this is second nature to me. Man, you speaking, man. You talking. You talking gutter? No, you talking my language, man. Like, this is what I know. Like, the fuck is you talking about? Exactly. Like, man, I ain't used to the Beverly Hills living. You know what I'm saying? I'm used to waking up in the house. We ain't never have two bills paid at the same time. We either have lights and no water or water and no lights. The fuck is you talking about? You know what I mean? <laughs> this real shit, though. Yeah. Well, well, I guess, what do you got I, coming soon, then? You know, in with this year, what do you got planned? You know, any, like, are you working with, like, any projects? Do you, of deals course. with anybody I of mean. course so i got a so i got uh i got one gallon getting ready to be uh I, i'm getting my songs together for one gallon i think i got about i think i got 12 good songs and i don't want to make none of my albums like longer than like i think a good solid album for today is probably like 10 songs yeah. you know so i choose the best 10 out of the 12 and then uh, me and Big Y, we working on a project. We working on this a project called Pay Homage. And we right. were we just, you know, I don't want to give too much of that out. You know what I'm saying? It's just, just, it's just going to be called Pay Homage. It's going to be nuts, though. Like, Dude, trust me. Like, fuck yeah. Yeah, like, I'm doing it. Uh, if, if anybody remembers Ice Cube's Jacking for Beats, yep, I'm yep. Just, like, the whole CD is going to kind of be like that to a certain Damn. degree. That's going to you know be fucking saying? dope. And then um, I got a, uh, as far as deals, uh, I haven't been, I haven't talked to anybody per se. I mean, I, I still keep in contact with a couple good people from the industry. So I've been, I've talked to L Nice. I've, uh, I've talked to 
I still keep in contact with Saint. I still keep in contact with um with uh with success. You know what I'm saying? I've I've yeah. talked to a couple people out of Atlantic, but uh nothing about no deals or nothing. Cause like right now I'm just embracing. You know what I'm saying? I'm just embracing. You know, being a free artist and yeah. and uh getting my own situation together because at this point I don't want to go to the labels no more. Now the labels finna have to start coming to me. Man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like and if they don't, I'm gonna just keep on having to drop this fire and keep building my I think I tried to skip steps, you know, I tried to go straight from the top and, and not build a solid foundation when the Treyway situation failed. Cause had yeah. I had a solid foundation, I never would have been wrapped up in that dumb shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So now I just take a step back and I'm just, I'm getting it out the gutter. You know what I'm saying? I build my fan base from scratch, you know, and I want to, I want to look to conquer the, the underground. You know what I'm saying? That way, when I do break as a mainstream artist, you know, I got a loyal fan base from the underground. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's just my plans right now. Yeah, that's, that's great, man. And I, I really think that, you know, you, you really do got some good fucking talent, you know, I've and especially, you know, for putting on for the state, you know, Nebraska, there's not, there's not a lot of people to look to, you know, that, that have made it such as rappers and shit, you know what I mean? Like, right. you know what I mean? So, I mean, like you are definitely putting on for the city or the, the state. I mean, you know, and I really, you know, love your music and I love what you're doing. I love that you're, you know, from the fucking state and I can talk to you and it's cool that you're doing what everybody else is trying to do around the world that is, you know, established in, you know, uh, New York and California, shit like that. You know, they have all these artists and shit, but like, you know, here there's, it's not a common thing, you know what I mean? And so we're doing something different. You know, I do the podcast and the interviewing, you do the rapping, you know, it's different. You know, we're, we're starting this generation for our fucking state, you know, so I really appreciate, you know, you doing what you do. And I'm going to continue to support you for everything you do, you know, and, you know, like I said, you know, this is, I know you got to go, you know, but this has been a great interview and maybe in the future, you know, we can do one in person, you know, cause like for I said, sure. you know, I mean, you just live up in Lincoln. That's only like for an sure. hour away. For sure. You know, and you know, it, like I said, though, man, this has been a good time. It's been a good talk. You gave me an hour and a half of your time. I appreciate you and, you know, keep doing what you're doing, man. You're doing a great job. I appreciate it, brother. I appreciate the interview, man. Also, I forgot to mention, man, Pain Boy, KD, and King Iso got a song that's getting ready to come out. Damn. Shit's going to be fucking crazy. Uh, Pain Boy, KD, and King Diamond is getting ready to have a song come out. Original Shotter. Uh, shout out, you know, Free My Guy, Two Shots, Sticky. Man, Free My Guy, Just Do It. Free everybody, you know what I'm saying, that's locked up, man. PHK. On the way, man, Piehead Clan, you know, watch out for my name, Piehead Donnie, Piehead Quiz, we out here. Man, just shout out to all the guys, man. Shout out my, my guy, Merc, you know, everybody from, I, I, I fuck with everybody, man. I'm not closing the box, man. I don't just fuck with one type of people, I fuck with everybody. Yeah. Shout out my, shout out my boy, DZ, you know what I'm saying? Shout out, shout out, Bo, Long Leg Keys, man. Shout out the South Side, all my homies on the South Side. We out here, man. We working, man. Hell yeah, okay. man. Always got to put Shout on for everybody. Scrams too. Shout out Scrams too. And everybody from the mafia. Chris King, man. Shout out, you know, Big M's. Big M game from M to the L. You know what I'm saying? We out here, man. We work. Fuck yeah, dude. That's dope. Where can the people find you? Oh, uh, man. You can, uh, any any streaming site, you just type in Paint Boy KD. And they got a Wikipedia page on me, man. Do I'm they? out. Man, you made it. <laughs> you go. go to Google and type in Paint Boy KD. Boom. I'm right there. You know what I'm saying? Fuck we yeah, out dude. Here. That's dope. Someone made that shit, bro. For real. I mean, Hell it just shows yeah. you that you doing, that you, you making it, bro. For real. Man, Keep... trying to, man. Just trying to bring it home. That's it. Yeah. You got it, bro. Well, thank you again, man. I appreciate you. Appreciate it, man. Y'all, man. Continue to support, bro. Continue to support Bro's platform, man. We need more people like him, man. Shit, shining the light on us artists, man. We we love y'all, man. We nothing without y'all, man. Same to you, man. It goes vi- goes uh, vice versa, man. Same shit. Okay, man. Be easy, bro. You too, man. Take care. All right, bro. If the e girl wants to be called an I.